Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Saxo's uh, weekly market outlook call. Um, I'm Charu. I'm a market strategist with Saxo Markets Singapore. And uh, yeah, um, welcome to the new month. Uh, let's dive right in. Um, last week has been a week of risk on. Uh, two key risk events both turned out to be better than feared the Fed meeting as well as a slew of corporate earnings. Uh, so on the Fed, uh, there was another 75 basis points of rate hike, uh, but mixed signals on forward guidance or actually I should say no signals on forward guidance. Uh, while it was a unanimous decision from the FOMC members to raise rates by 75 basis points, um, Chairman Powell actually uh, dodged every attempt in the Q&A to uh, make a point that can be considered solid forward guidance. He actually clearly stated uh, that the Fed won't issue any clear guidance on future rate moves and that the June FOMC dot plot is the only thing that will offer any um, you know, likely path of rates from here on. Um, any direct questions on easing of financial conditions or for markets pricing and rate cuts for 2023? Um, they were all completely ditched. Um, so this has sparked a risk on mood in the markets. Uh, but our sense is that volatility of the Fed meetings from here on will be much higher, which suggests more and not less risk. The other key um, data that we had from the US last week was the Q2 GDP, which has confirmed that the US is in a technical recession, but that has little significance really. Uh, there's no doubt that July growth indicators have also started flashing warning signals. But again, um, with the Fed raising rates and tightening liquidity, uh, there is bound to be some demand destruction. That's the whole objective. Uh, our bigger worry, however, is uh, still inflation. Uh, with financial conditions continuing to ease uh, despite the intentions of the Fed to tighten. Uh, that just means that there will be further inflationary pressures. Uh, so we're not really getting anywhere in terms of getting inflation under control so far. And that was also confirmed by the PCE release in the US on Friday. That's the metric that the Fed tracks for inflation and it printed record fresh highs of 6.8% uh, YOY in June from 6.3% previously and the core was higher as well. So what does that mean in terms of the markets? Um, uh, my sense is that the markets will need to revise up their terminal rate forecasts for the Fed. Currently, markets are looking at a terminal rate of 3.3%. Um, and uh, I think the lack of forward guidance from the Fed has kind of made the markets less hawkish. Um, but uh, as we get closer to understanding that inflation is still high, this has to go up. So that possibly means there will be more inversion of the yield curve as short term rates push higher, but recession concerns will continue to bring the long term yields lower. That also means possibly more dollar gains are still likely until at least um, we see some steepening of the yield curve. Uh, so key to watch this week will be the July payrolls in the US, which is uh, due on Friday. And more importantly, uh, wage gains, sustained gains in wages will further push the rhetoric that we've been quite cautious about and that is higher for longer inflation. <clears throat> In terms of FX, um, we've seen a marked recovery in the yen last week. It's up over 2% against the US dollar. Uh, now, this may be actually the beginning of a long term trend, although not necessary that we'll see further progress in that this week. Uh, we had the Tokyo CPI uh, in Japan released last week, which was above expectations. Uh, but the pressure on the Bank of Japan to tighten has peaked really um, as US yields are remaining uh, pretty capped right now. Uh, but still, um, that doesn't mean that we can't, uh, you know, expect further yen recovery. In fact, that's what is more likely than less. Um, unless, of course, US yields move higher, uh, we should continue to see uh, some further recovery in the yen. And I think we've seen that move again this morning in the Asian hours. Uh, next key level to watch for USD yen will be 131.50. Um, Euro has been the underperformer, but um, it's actually been pretty range bound last week uh, because, um, you know, Russia's gas flows were cut, but the focus still remained on Fed and its lack of forward guidance, which has made the markets uh, take less hawkish assumptions as we just discussed. Um, there is likely to be continued focus on European gas supplies as we head into the winter months. Uh, we've seen German and European electricity prices uh, reaching fresh record highs and Europe is targeting a cut in gas demand 
by 15%. Uh, what that means is that uh, there will be a continued focus on exploring alternative sources of energy. This could mean coal, which has certainly become more popular recently. Uh, also, nuclear is being considered more and more. Uh, Germany is actually restarting three more nuclear power plants in addition to um, the three that have been in operation uh, for a few uh, weeks now. Uh, so possibly, again, a good idea to look at some of the uranium or nuclear ETFs, particularly the European ones. Uh, so overall, in terms of FX, the dollar has weakened last week due to the risk on tone in the markets, and that has meant also a solid recovery in commodities. We saw WTI futures rising 4% last week, although still overall down 10% for the month. But, uh, the, they're starting this week again um, on a downbeat note because of the disappointment from uh, China's PMI, and my colleague Redmond will get to that later. Uh, but the key to watch for the oil sector this week is the OPEC Plus meeting. Uh, there is some chatter of a modest output increase for September, but uh, of course we can't expect anything big from the OPEC at this point. Uh, metals also relieved last week because of weaker dollar, because of some stimulus announcements from China. Uh, copper, aluminium, nickel, zinc were all high last week. Um, also, I think worth noting here as we talk about commodities is the energy companies, Exxon, Chevron, Shell, Total Energies, they all reported record profits last week. Um, and all of them ex actually expanded share buybacks. So just reinforcing our view here that we have been for many, many months now and we still remain overweight the energy sector. Now, while the busiest earnings week for the season may have passed without any major shocks, we um, have still another heavy week ahead of us. Uh, we have 148 S&P 500 companies reporting earnings this week um, in a variety of sectors, including energy, which will be occidental. We have a lot of travel companies reporting, uh, Uber, Airbnb, Booking Holdings, Expedia. We have semiconductors with AMD. Uh, we have e-commerce. We have healthcare. Um, I think the key uh, themes to focus focus on will be uh, the shifting consumer demand patterns, any possible supply chain issues or actually a relief on that front, um, and more importantly, the impact from a stronger dollar as well. Uh, that's it for me, and I'll now pass to Redmond for a deeper dive on China and more. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, as uh, Charles mentioned earlier, um, it's, uh, the US equity market has been um, doing uh, Kawali and on the, now I perceive the less hawkish Fed tightening path going ahead. And also the uh, earliest we have rather downbeat sentiment in the month. And then is uh, when those earnings come actually quite a bit is, uh, less than, uh, uh, better than uh, fear. And so the market also worried. And looked at pretty last Friday, we have uh, Amazon and Apple and Amazon, uh, 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 beat the market with uh, better than expected revenue growth and so it end the session is actually 10 percent higher and apple also gained uh three percent and uh basically the iphone sales is uh were rather solid and uh coming to um uh china and uh, hong kong and last week was uh, performance was uh, uh uh, basically, for the whole month, actually, is, is worse than the U.S. I mean, for the whole month, is uh, uh, Hang Seng was uh, down seven point eight percent in June, uh, in July, sorry, and and, and the CSI three hundred uh, was down seven uh, percent for the month of July. And on Friday, both of these two benches were also down more than one percent. Hang Seng down two point three in in on Friday, and uh, CSI three hundred was uh, one point three percent lower. And uh, I mean, what is bothering the market? I think the market uh, is uh, fairly disappointed after the July uh, China uh, China's uh, Politburo meeting, and um, there was no uh, incremental or, or any additional uh, 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 economic stimulus coming out from the meeting. The tone of the meeting basically is focusing on stability, ensuring stability, and and also as some uh, new. Uh, uh, a wording concerning about stability of the property market and the banking sector, and but most of the work and uh, uh, are expecting is uh, from the from the without is actually is expecting the local government uh, to do more uh, in this, and uh, there's not there's no mentioning of uh, additional stimulus from the central government, and also 
uh, there, there's no mention about the 5.5% growth target and more like now is a become a more best effort based kind of a basis and that is the market is uh, investors a be a little bit disappointed about that and also um uh, the, uh there is also some uh uh, negative news coming out uh, 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 regarding uh, the regulatory environment for tech company. Uh, for example, uh, Hangzhou, uh, Hangzhou, Hangzhou Municipal uh, Market Supervision Bureau, and they summoned the management of Meituan and uh, and other the uh, food delivery e platforms uh, company. Um, and then it's uh, over the top basically it's for uh, alleged uh, research uh, price cutting cover activities. So uh, May Tuan also uh, share price down uh, more than 6% on, on Friday. And also is uh, there was also report that uh, Jack Ma is uh, going to give up his control over the end group. And also there's as under certain pressure from the Chinese uh, authority. And um, so Alibaba share down more than 6% during Hong Kong time on Friday, but uh, at overnight trading when the news from the US, uh, the US SEC uh, decision to add uh, Alibaba to the list of the Chinese ADR potentially potentially being uh, forced to delist from US exchanges. And um, that news also uh, pushed uh, the ADR further down. And by the time of New York close, there was down uh, another 6% from the Hong Kong uh, closing level. And uh, and then uh, on Sunday, uh, as Charles mentioned, and China uh, released uh, reported the manufacturing PMI uh, 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 and not manufacturing PMI number. And uh, manufacturing PMI was particularly weak, much weaker than expected. And uh, while the market was expecting uh, was expecting a fifty point uh, three. Uh, uh, print, but is in fact is uh, it came out as uh, uh, below fifty and down to uh, forty nine. That was a full one point two point uh, lower than June. Uh, it's also Im very important to note that is uh, among the thirteen major sub indices uh, of the manufacturing PMI, um, uh, all of them uh, fell, and ten of them. Uh, uh, went below uh, 50, uh, the 50 threshold indicating contraction. So, um, uh, for example, uh, new orders down from uh, 50.4 to 48.5, and new export order sub index also uh, going further below 50 uh, from 49.5 now lower to 47.4. And uh, the witness is also across a small, medium to large size. Uh, uh, enterprises and especially the uh, medium-sized enterprise was particularly weak, and uh, it was uh, it was down to from fifty-one point three to forty-eight point five. So um, for on the law manufacturing side and services moderate a bit, but uh, still in the expansionary territory, and then construction uh, PMI continue to be uh, strong. And uh, we will we will be having Chai Sin uh, and manufacturing PMI later today. Uh, uh, actually, uh, maybe half an hour, uh, around half an hour later. And uh, the Chai Sin uh, manufacturing PMI come from more company from the uh, eastern coast uh, SME. So even though the Bloomberg survey suggesting still suggesting a uh, 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 51.5 print and but uh, given what we have saw we have seen on Sunday on the official PMI uh, that might be a uh, uh, possibility uh, that, that, that that may be quite probable that uh, the Chi C number will also be weaker and this expectation and um, uh, and also as uh, 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 as we discussed, and uh, I think this week uh, the focus besides uh, the weaker PMI and will continue to be the property market and uh, uh, develop development in the property market in uh, in China. And the latest new home sales number from the top 100 developers and continue to be quite weak uh, in July. And uh, another focus of the market, of course, it will be also on the internet company and also uh, uh, was uh, the development on the regulatory environment and also uh, the uh, uh, US ADR uh, uh, 
situation and see whether there's a uh, further risk on more company uh, for being uh, putting on the list for potential delisting. Uh, by the way, uh, today is also uh, uh, the amendment to the anti-monopoly law will also take effect uh, in China. And basically some of those penalties are higher than the, the original or the previous uh, legislation. And I think that's all for me. Uh, okay, great. So uh, just to kind of uh, let you know that we are also writing a daily market update on what to watch. Um, uh, let your um, RMs know if you want to be added to the strats email uh, distribution list. And uh, we will also be publishing a week ahead note for today, which is called the Saxo Spotlight. That will include a recording of this call as well in case you want to get back to it. Um, and uh, that's all from us. Um, thank you and happy trading week. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.